Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get your extension premium RGB edition controller up and running using um, LaunchBox, LED Blinky, and MAME. Those are the three main softwares that we're gonna be using today to get those going for you. Um, so initially, when you set this thing up, uh, you're gonna have four cables that you'll have to plug in. You're gonna have one Molex power supply cable and you're gonna have three USB cables. Now the three USB cables, you're gonna have a one that's labeled green, and that's gonna be your servo stick, which uh, that's the motor that runs the joystick and switch between four-way and eight-way. Then you're gonna have a purple, which is gonna be your spinner, and a blue one, which is going to be the ultimate I.O. board itself. Now for this, I'm gonna run everything off my laptop so I can have the board out and, and everything and be able to kind of show you. Now the fourth cable, your Molex power supply, what I'm doing, seeing I'm running off my laptop, I just got an old standalone PC power supply here, and it just plugs in. It's a standard four pin Molex power cable. Uh, almost all PCs will have this. And I'm gonna show you on my personal one here because I'm running the Ultimate IO as well. Your PC should have one or two extra Molex power connectors inside of it. And if they're long enough, you can just run them out the back like I've done here and plug it in. Or if it's not, this cable is plenty long to where you can run it into the computer and plug it into there as well. So that's how you power it. And these are the three USB ports you'll have to have, uh, cords you'll have to have plugged in to get it going as well. <clears throat> so now what we're going to do is I've got everything that I do in games wise in a folder called games on my C drive. Now you may have yours elsewhere and that is perfectly fine. Um, but you are going to have to create a games folder on your C drive to move one of the folders that we make for you uh, into because it's the only way it will work and I'll explain that in a minute. Alright, so a quick edit to the video here. Although while you can put these files in, in any folder, uh, you know, your LED blinky folder can be in anywhere on your C drive or wherever you put it. If you do put these files somewhere other than a uh, games folder on the C drive. You will have to edit this file here, control panel dot lay, open it in notepad. And this, you need to change to the path of where you have LED Blinky installed. So if you have LED Blinky installed in just in your C drive and not in a games folder, just back this out and then save from there. So be sure that this LED Blinky input map XML is the path is where you actually have the LED Blinky installed. All right, now back. But here's the three main things we'll be using, LaunchBox, LED Blinky, and MAME. So you're gonna get a folder or a zip file, and it's gonna have all of this in it. You have a Joy Tray folder, a couple other files, and a README. Now I've got this README in here, and it'll explain where everything goes if you, um, can't remember or don't you know have access to this video for some reason so the first thing you want to do is like I said this joy tray this whole folder I'm just gonna copy them and move them up this whole folder you need to put into your games folder on your C drive that part is important all right now next you're gonna have these other files here this FE Active, you don't have to have this, but I'm, I'm gonna use it anyway and I'm gonna explain why. I'm gonna make a copy of it as well. And it's going to go into your LED Blinky. There is a LWA folder up here. Open that up and then just paste it into here. All right, next, the rest of these files. So we got this one, yeah, let me set this down so I can just select all of them. Colors, control panel lay file, LED Blinky's control, and LED Blinky input map. All these files, I'm going to copy, and then I'm going to paste them into my main LED Blinky folder. All right? So everything's going to get pasted into here. Overwrite these files. All right, so now you're done here. You've taken everything out of here you need. You can close that. 
And then we're going to go back into our LED blinky folder. All right, in here, what we're going to do first is we're going to generate the LED blinky input map. So if you click this, it's going to open up and it's going to have this is where all your key codes and everything is. This is one of those files that we moved over. So it shows every file, every LED um, color, what, what they do and where they go. Okay, so that shows that you've moved the file into the right spot and everything is where it should be. Okay, next what you're going to do is now you're going to configure LED Blinky. So, LED Blinky config.exe. Open that up. You're going to get this little file or little screen. So, first thing you want to do, see while we're running LaunchBox, click FE. And this is where you select which front end you're using. We're going to use LaunchBox. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of go through uh, all this stuff on here, tab by tab, and jeez, uh, sorry, and uh, get everything set up for you. So what we're going to do is start the Game Options tab, and start at the top. We're going to uh, click Light Game Controls. All right. And then down here, we're going to leave everything else. Okay. And then we'll go down here to this game start section. Now, game start animation. This is kind of cool. You can go in here, and there are a ton of animations already pre built into here. So, like, you can pick a pattern like this. You can press test, and it'll show you what it does. So that way you can kind of test and make sure everything's going on and everything's working right, okay? And then when you're done, just press stop. What I do on mine, game start animation, I just kind of keep it at random. That way it just does something different every time. So put that on random. All right, then you go over here. We got speak name on start. And what that'll do is it'll tell you uh, the name of the game. When you start it up, whatever the ROM is, it'll tell you. Then right here, if you check this one, game controls, what it'll do is it'll flash and tell you what the game controls are. Do not check primary controls. Leave that off. Okay. Now, we're going to go to the next tab. FE options. FE startup animation. So this is what's going to happen is your front end. Whenever you launch LaunchBox, this will tell it what animation to open up. So what it has when it starts... It's going to play an animation and then go to something else. So you can press it and test whatever you want to find the one that you want to like. But once again, I just kind of do random. That way it's, it's different every time you open it up. Oh, dead comment. This is hard to do with one hand. So let's try this again. Let's try that. Let me move this. All right, so here we go. We can go back up to random. It's all the way at the top. All right, so when you're random, and then uh, it'll just play it one time and then call it a day. Now, here we go. FE active animation. So this is the front end one is active. So when it's just sitting there, like I might as just sitting over there, it's going to cycle through that animation that I made for you guys and put in. And what it is, if you go here and you scroll down to FE active all right and we're going to test and i'll show you what it does so what it does is just kind of cycle through the colors while your front end is sitting there and that way it's just not you know blank white buttons so it's got a little cool look to it now you don't have to use that one you can put anything else on here you want you can use a pattern that's a preset and give that a shot but I kind of like the FE Act, the one I made. You know, it's your own choice. You can put whatever you want on here. It's no big deal. So we're just going to put this back at that. And then front end quit animation. You don't have to have anything here. Um, but I kind of like the curtain close. So this way when you exit launch box, it's going to play this. All right. Now this is kind of cool. 
So when your front end goes, when LaunchBox goes into a screensaver mode, you know, after it's been sitting for a while, I also do random in that way. It just plays a random, you know, animation on there while it's in uh, attract mode, so to speak, or sleep mode or whatever you want to call it, screensaver. Uh, this is kind of cool. You can also have it, if you click this, it'll randomly start saying saying whatever you got typed in here. So like I can press this. Get the intruder. Intruder alert. I detect coin in pocket. Which is kind of cool. And you can also, you can type in these or you can delete them. Or you can type in something like uh, this. Right? You type in chat is cool. Press test. Chat is cool. There you go. So then uh, you've got everything in there. You can also put, I'm kind of mean, so I got mine where it, it will rain. I took all this out and it'll randomly say uh, the certain people that live here stink or, or whatever. So that's that tab. That's done. Launch box. Here we go. Do not click this. Leave that off. Okay. Leave that off. Here, demo game controls. Select this. Five seconds is a little long for me, so I drop it down to three seconds. Now, what this will do is when you're in LaunchBox and you highlight a game, it'll show what controls are used for that game for three seconds and then go back to the front end active screen. Okay? So that's what that does. Next, down here, big box settings XML. <clears throat> what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to navigate to where you have this file. And it's going to be in your launch box folder. So you hit this, it's going to bring up your little explorer. And you're going to navigate to where you have launch box installed. Like I said, I keep all my stuff in games. Launch box, it's going to be in the data folder. So launch box, data, there it is. Big box settings XML. That's the file you want. Hit open. And now it's mapped to that. Okay, next, go over here to main tab, and it's going to want all this. You got to set up main in here. Main configuration folder. Hit this. I got mine in games. So I go here, and I go to my main folder, which is here, and then your CFG folder right there. And that's it. Hit OK. Next one down, controller file. Don't need that. Leave that off. Now, colors I and I, that's going to be already mapped for you. And that's that other file that we sent you and put in. Then you go down here to the next one, MAME XML. You'll need that. So you're going to have to send the path to there as well. Go back up to your MAME folder. And then find your MAME XML files. It's usually down here at the very, very bottom, right here. MAME XML. Select that. All right, so now you got everything done here. And that is basically it. Now, LED Blinky has a ton of other options. You can go into audio and set up jukebox settings. You can go into miscellaneous options and set up uh, a couple of other things. Like here, you can change you know, the voice. You got a male and a female. Um, you can also, if you have other LEDs on your cabinet, you can wire them in and run it. Um, integrations. It has all kinds of stuff that you can do here. But I'm not going to get into that So, because there's, there's a ton of other tutorials on YouTube and stuff. If you go to Mavericks Arcade on YouTube, he has a bunch of stuff. And that's kind of where I learned the in and outs of running LED Blinky. It is a great YouTube page to learn all this stuff. So... We got all this done. Save. That, of course, is extremely important. All right. So now you are basically done setting up LED Blinky. That is basically it. Next, what you got to do, we're going to set up LaunchBox. So if you fire open LaunchBox, I've only got a handful of games in here, but I got just what's needed. So when you're in LaunchBox, go to Tools, 
Go all the way down to Options. It's going to bring up this menu. When you're here, you got to scroll all the way down here to Integrations. Integrations. LED Blanky. Here what you got to do is enable LED Blinky and then you got to direct it to the path where your LED Blinky is installed. Once again, mine is in the games folder. LED Blinky. And then LED Blinky EXE. So you've mapped it to there, right? Leave this checked. Use advanced logic. Don't start screensaver. Leave that off. And that's that. So now you go down here to OK. Hit OK. And it'll save it. We'll do a little quick little restart. But what I always do is close this out because I want to I want to completely fresh restart it. Alright? So I'm gonna close it out. And then maybe what may have happened in my case is LED blinky kind of started. But I like to close it out. So everything's off. So now, I'm going to go here to LaunchBox. I can't find my dagum. There we go. I'm going to go here to LaunchBox. And I open it. And kind of back up so you can see all of it at the same time. It's playing my open animation. Okay. So it's going to play that. And then go into my front end active animation. Right? So now we're good. So here, when you go, and you highlight a game, it's going to show the controls for three seconds and then go back to the front end animation. Burger time. Select it. Shows the controls. All right, so now looks like we've got it working right. Okay? Simple. The only thing left is to get the uh, four way joystick working. So, and I'm going to show you that on Dig Dug here. I'll show you a couple of things on Dig Dug. So, Dig Dug is a four way joystick game. Now here's the only problem with this is you're going to have to add the, the four way to each game independently. So games that you know run a four way like Burger Time, uh, Donkey Kong, Dig Dug, Elevator Action. I, got, I put a bunch of four way games on here just so you can kind of, we can kind of see them. Um, you know, there's also, you know, Miss Pac-Man, stuff like that. So what we're going to do is when you, you select Dig Dug, and then if you right click it, now you have to do all of this in LaunchBox, not BigBox. So LaunchBox is where you kind of check, make all your settings and your changes and stuff. And then BigBox is just, you know, pretty front end. So you select Dig Dug, and if you right click on it, it brings up this big menu here. And you go down to Edit. After here, you go to Additional Apps. Open that. And then it's going to know, want to know what app you're going to run. So you go down here to add application. And then it's going to ask for a name. And then what I do is I just call it four way. Right. And then it wants a path to that application. So this, you go to browse. And remember in your games folder, you have a joy tray file or folder. You go in there, four way execute. This guy right here. Select that. That's the path you need. Now go here and select automatically run before main application. And then press OK. And that's it. So now you go over here and you say OK to this guy. So now what's going to happen, when we select Dig Dug, if you listen, this joystick is going to switch from what's currently at an 8-way, right? So I'm going to start Dig Dug and listen. You heard it. The servo motor inside changes. Dig Dug. Pump. Up. And now, it is a 4-way joystick. Right. Alright? So now, what that hotkey script does is... When you press exit or the escape button, you hear it, it switches back to eight-way. 
So that's how you set up the four-way joystick and everything. So I've already done it on Donkey Kong, and I've already done it on all these, but I left Dig Dug open so that I could show you how to add that application onto LaunchBox. So now every time you start Dig Dug, it's going to switch that joystick to a four-way. Let's do it again. Dig Dug. All right. Pump. Up. And that's it. Down. Now... If you notice, I've got all my controls set to this side. There's nothing over here, right? Well, when I play these games, I, I don't want to be standing off to the side. I like to stand in the middle here and play. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate this button as my pump button as well. And that's super easy to do. When you're inside main, when you're in your game, if you press menu, that brings up this little screen here and if you scroll down to input this machine all right then what you can do you go down to what you want to do so I want to add that other button to be my button one so I go down here to button one select right and then what's gonna do is wait for an input so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press this button and it comes up as control now don't move it off of there. Press enter again, select. It's going to another input. I'm going to press this guy. Now, I need to press control or A, which is that button or that button, and it'll work. So, I'm going to get out of that menu, and I'm going to show you that it works. I'm going to insert some coins and. So now, I can press this button to pump, right? Or I can press this button to pump. Now you're saying, well, that button's not lit up. Any changes you make inside the game is not going to show until you restart the game. So now I'm back out of Dig Dug. And if I say it again, Dig Dug. Pump. now the button's lit up. up. Down. So now. I can map any of these buttons to whatever I want them to be and the light will follow it because it uses the main controls file to know what it's doing. So that's the easy way to map all your buttons to, the, to how you want them. And uh, man, that's, that's kind of it. Now there are a ton of other things that I can um, show you and stuff. So say like, we go back here and I go into my LED blinky folder there's a couple things in here I'm gonna change this to where I can get to it so I'm just kind of give you a brief rundown of what some of these files do so this guy the color RGB I and I this I've made all these colors so these are all the standard colors that you can change the buttons and the joystick to Black, white, red, yellow, orange, lime, green, cyan, blue, purple, violet, magenta, brown, and pink. I, I've created all those colors. Some of those are already created in the RGB file, but I, I added a whole bunch. And the reason that, that that is important is because if you go into this one, colors I and I, right? And you open it up, this is the folder, the file that tells what colors each button is on the game. So, for instance, I'm going to find uh, Dig Dug. Now, this is the ROM name, so you have to know the name of the ROM. Dig Dug Lucky is Dig Dug. It's kind of one of the reasons I use it, because it's easy to, to know. So, if you go down here to Dig Dug, so you got everything. Joystick's red, button one is white. Remember, it was white when we was playing this game. So, say, I don't want it to be white. I want it to be, let's go with blue. I can just type in blue, right? And then I go save. Because you have to save it. Now, let's fire back. Man, what happened to my autofocus? Let's fire back LaunchBox again. All right, let's back up. Now, I'm going to fire up Dig Dug. Dig Dug. 
Look what we got. Blue button. It's blue. So you can go in and customize the buttons and the colors to, to whatever you want on this. And it, it's relatively simple. If you just take your time and put everything in where I showed you and how I showed you, it, you, you should set it up fairly easily. It's, it's no, it shouldn't be that big of an issue. Uh, just make sure you go through the steps and everything else. Last but not least, I'm going to show you why um, it's important that this joy tray folder goes into your games folder on the C drive. So what I did was to make all this work is I created this auto hotkey script right here. And that is what switches the joystick for four way to eight way. Okay. It runs the servo stick executable that's in here. If you know how to make an auto hotkey script, um, then that's fantastic. And what I've done is I've left this text in here for you. This is the text you'll need to, to create that script. And what you'll have to do is change your path here to wherever you have that servo um, execute file at. So if you know how to do all that, uh, I've left you this in here so that you can create your own to wherever you put it on your computer. But for this purposes, if you just put it into your games folder, create a games folder on the C drive and make sure joy tray is in there everything will work just fine. You, you won't have an issue. And um, that's, that's basically it. Uh, this controller is beautiful and it, it works. I mean, it, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's pretty. I haven't, I, there's nobody doing anything like this. So it's, uh, it's gorgeous. And if you just take your time and set it up properly, um, as you can see mine in the background, I, I just love it. And it works great. Thank you very much.